Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio. We have a very bright, nice sunny day today. Uh, so I've decided to do a relatively simple shoot uh, just of these uh, flowers and the various insects that uh, will be on them. Okay, so let's see how I made this image. Okay, so for capturing this sort of thing, what I've decided to do is use a 70 to 200 zoom lens. Uh, and so that it can focus a little closer, I've added an extension ring in here. Now, obviously, with the uh, weather conditions as we've got today, there's a lot of bright sunshine around, which means that I can use uh, a relatively high shutter speed and handhold the camera. Uh, now, normally I would set the camera into a manual mode so that I'm setting the aperture and the uh, shutter speed and the ISO. Uh, but this time I've set it in an automatic mode and I'm using aperture priority. And I've done that on purpose because I want to end up with a very narrow depth of field. Therefore I've uh, set the uh, aperture to 2.8. Now the uh, ISO is set to 100 so the shutter speed will go up and down uh, as the sun goes um, behind clouds etc. So that's in uh, automatic, so I don't have to think about it. Uh, the other thing that I've done is set the lens in autofocus as well. Uh, now I use a uh, combination which uses a back button focus here so that I can lock the focus when I need to. But you can use whatever you're happiest with. Okay, so the idea is that I'm going to try and capture uh, some uh, bees uh, or wasps or whatever it happens to be, butterflies if there are any, on the heads of the flowers. So I'm not using a tripod like I said so that I can wander around and just find um, something interesting to uh, take a picture of. Now the long lens allows you to get in close to your subject uh, and the extension tube means that you can also focus close. Uh, now, the interesting part is going to be the, uh, the bee, which is on the flower. Uh, so you need to be able to scan across the scene uh, and then uh, very quickly just pick out which one you want. Which is why I've set the camera to automatic. Uh, it means I don't have to think about the exposure and to a certain degree I don't have to think about the focus either. Now you do need a certain amount of patience for this because you have to wait literally for your subject to come to you. Now the whole point in putting the camera in automatic is so that you can react quickly when a subject presents itself, like so. Okay, so with those uh, images now captured, uh, what I'm going to do is to go into Photoshop and do some post-production. So here we are in Photoshop uh, and I've opened up um, six of the images which I captured outside. So I'll just run through these. Uh, this one's quite nice. Uh, I like the out of focus background in here and I have caught some detail of uh, an old spider's web in there as well. Uh, and then on the second one we have this bee. Um, it's okay but I think um, the bee is uh, a little small in the frame so I'm not going to go much further with that one. This is a better one. We have two subjects uh, caught in the frame here. Uh, so I might do something with that one. Uh, and I quite like this one. Uh, this has uh, turned out quite well overall, I think. I do like the out of focus effect that you get by using a, uh, a long telephoto lens uh, in conjunction with an extension tube. Uh, I think that's worked quite well. Uh, and then finally, we have these two, which again are okay. Um, Got a nice, uh, nice image there. That one's very similar. 
But I think all in all, I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to do something with this. Okay, so to take this one forward, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is just open up a new file. So what I'm going to do is uh, just right click on the layer, ask for a duplicate layer, um, but I don't want the same document, I want a new document. So I come down to new, and I'll just call this B. Okay, and that's opened up this uh, new file, which is just a copy uh, of this one uh, and the, at the top here. So I'm not doing anything to these, and I'm just going to carry this one forward. Okay, I think the first thing to do would just be to do a global adjustment uh, to the levels. So I'll just bring up the levels dialog box here, uh, and I'm just going to bring up the slider here, just to make that a bit more vibrant. I'll just take this one the other way. Something like that. You can click on the little preview icon here, which will take you from what you had before to what you've got now. So we generally increase the contrast across the image. Uh, and I think I would just like to brighten that up ever so slightly, probably something like that. Just check that with the preview button. That seems to work fine. OK, so I'll just click on OK. Uh, and then the next thing that I think I'd like to do um, is just um, sharpen the image up a little. Uh, if I zoom all the way in to 100%, you can see that it is ever so slightly soft. So I'm just going to go to the filter, uh, come down to sharpen, and then go down to um, one of the newer features, this smart sharpen. I find this works extremely well. Just we'll click on that. OK, uh, so I'm just going to play with these sliders here uh, just to sharpen up this image a little. Uh, if, again, if I turn the preview on and off, you can see what it's doing at the moment. So that's without the sharpen, and that's with it. There's not really a lot going on. So I'm just going to increase the amount from 200 to somewhere near, um, what shall we say, 290, nearly 300, something like that. And I'm just going to change the radius from 1 to about 1.7. This is very sensitive, as you can see. If I just turn that on and off, that's what we had before, and that's what we've got now. Uh, which is a bit of a vast improvement. So we'll click on OK. Uh, and now just holding down the Alt key with the zoom function still active, that will allow me to zoom out. So just click the mouse and we'll go back to 33%. There we go. All right, so that's looking uh, quite nice as it is. Uh, what else shall I do? Uh, I think at this point I will um, look at a crop. Uh, so we'll just bring that in. I'll bring in 16 by 9 because that's what I usually use. Uh, I quite like all these um, out of focus flowers, uh, but this one at the other side here seems to be a bit lost. So I'm just going to crop that out. Something like that. Let's bring that back in again. There. I quite like that. So I'll click on OK. And I can always um, change that later uh, if I want, uh, because I didn't click on the uh, delete cropped pixels up here. Uh, so if I go back into a uh, crop again, I can actually make this bigger. If I just come out and go back in, you see the whole image is actually still there. So it was around there somewhere, I think, where I had it before. Okay, 
So we'll just click on OK. Right. Um, so what else might we do? I think, um, again, this edges are a little bright uh, for my liking. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just make a duplicate of that layer, like so. Uh, and then on the duplicate one, uh, I'm just going to add an adjustment. Uh, and this time, I'll just add a brightness and contrast adjustment. I'll take the brightness down a bit and just increase the contrast a bit. Something like that. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Yes, I think that's all right. So then we go back to here. Now, obviously, these come with a mask. Um, so with the mask being white, I need to make sure that black is selected over here. I'll go up here and select a brush. Uh, now, just making sure that the opacity is actually set to 100%. Uh, and I'll just see what sort of size that is. Yeah, it seems about right for what I want to do. And so starting in the middle, I'll just click that through. I'll just brighten that area up, which is actually just revealing um, the layer without the adjustment. Something like that. So if I just now click on the visibility tool here, that's what you had before, and that's what we've got now. So it's just taken the edges down a little. And there we have it. So leaving the camera uh, in automatic uh, for a lot of the functions uh, has enabled uh, me to uh, concentrate on the subject more, uh, which you do need to do uh, to get this sort of picture. Uh, you need to have one eye on uh, the wide view and another eye on uh, what's going on in the viewfinder. So letting the camera do the exposure and the focus uh, gives you the opportunity to do that. And I think this has worked very well. OK, so I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that uh, picture. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.